Welcome back. Let's dive into the Android attack service. So the first topic is the IBC, Interprocess Communication. And within the IBC, there are different vulnerabilities or misconfigurations, which are related to exported. And the first topic we're going to cover is exported activities. So exported is a flag or a tag which can be set in the Android manifest file. So if you search for the text Android colon exported is true, then you will get all the exported activities, but also services, broadcast providers, and the other topics we had on the previous slide. And within an activity, you can also have an intent filter which explains what you can do with an activity or how you can launch it but i would advise you to also dive into the documentation of android or look into how to build an app if you want to have more details about the components of an android app but we will refer to some testing guidelines so at least that you will learn how to discover these vulnerabilities so there are a few references mentioned here so let's go quickly over these references. So mainly the official Android documentation is pretty good. So understand common security risk is a page on the privacy and security. And one of the risks is Android exported. The Android exported attribute sets whether a component can be launched by components of other applications. So if the flag is set to true, any app can access the activity and launch it exact class name and if it sets to false of course then it's not possible and there are more configurations but this is at least a nice and short definition and also it's important to know what an intent is an intent is an abstract description of an operation to be performed it can be used with start activity to launch an activity etc this is quite an abstract definition but the examples make it more clear so an intent mainly exists of action data and a category so an action can be view edit or main and then you can pass data to an intent so for example a url can be passed to an intent but i will show you an example in a bit and also as mentioned earlier oas mobile application security is also a very good resource so it consists of a mobile application security verification standard and also a testing guide and especially this testing guide is useful so in this case we're going to look into the category platform and then testing for sensitive functionality exposure through IPC. And to do this, you can start with static analysis. So by looking into the Android manifest file, and then it explains that you can have activity services, content providers, and also about exported activities. But I will not go over this whole page, but at least if you want to test it, I would recommend also follow this guideline. But I would like to go into the practical part. So how do we identify an exported activity in the Android manifest file? If we search for exported is true, then for example, in this Twitter application, there is a package with a class authorized app activity and that one can be started from another application. So this is an example of the exported true flag. And a second possibility is if an activity has an intent, then also implicitly it is an exported activity. How do we exploit exported activities? Maybe for real exploitation, you should build another app to exploit it or do it from the outside, but at least Within a device, you can maybe bypass some functionality by using AM. So let's go into the practical part. Again, I have an Android 13 device open via mobile hacking lab. And from the previous exercises, I already downloaded this browser 2.apk, which is the Chrome test browser. And also in addition, there is a vulnerable Android Goat application you can also download, which is also referred in the OASP resources, which is a nice application to test some vulnerabilities. And I have JEDEX because I want to be able to read the Android manifest. So if I open JEDEX and I open this browser2.apk file, then resources, Android manifest, and then we can search for Android exported is true. Mark all might be useful. So in this application, almost all activities are exported. So in other applications, I would not expect to find it that much, but at least it's nice to demonstrate you how this works. And what you can also see is that some of those activities, especially this one, web view browser activity has different intents. This also explains what an intent is. So an intent has an action and a category. Action main and lancer is also quite default. So you can specify it. And if you don't specify it, then it will also try the main lancer activity. And also, there are more specific intents. So one, for example, with default browsable, and then it also accepts some schema like HTTP and HTTPS in this case. So what you can do is just copy the name of the activity. Make sure you are connected with the device, then ADB shell AM start. Then you can just paste this complete package name. And then there's one thing you need to do. So we have the package name and then the 
class name and you need to put a forward slash between the packets and the class name. And if I do this, and then you can see starting intent with action main and category lancer. And on the device, the WebView Browser Tester is started. So this is already an example how you can test it on the device if you're connected via ADB. And in this case, you can also specify some data, AM start, then the data, and then the same activity. And then it also accepts a URL and also goes to a website. So this is in short how you can use this activity manager. Now let's continue with this Andro Goat application. So first make sure you install the application. So if you're using a mobile hacking lab device, you can go to app and then just upload the package file. So in my case, this application is already installed on the device. Now let's start this application. So this is an application with a lot of vulnerabilities. Let's start with unprotected Android components. And then in this case, we need to set a pin, 1224 for example. Verify pin. And then we can download an invoice. And now we cannot go to the next page, but if we open this Android manifest for this application in JEDA, there are two exported activities. One is a server related to the download of the invoice, but we are looking for an activity. So there is no activity with exported true, but there is one activity with an intent filter. So implicitly, this one also is an exported true. So let's see if we can start this activity. ADB shell AM start, and then we want to start this activity. And this already works to bypass this protected component. And in this case, I didn't specify the action and the category. If there are multiple actions and category or multiple intent filters, then you might need to do this as well. So then you can also copy paste this action and category. So let's see if this returns the same result. And again, we also bypass this again with a little bit longer syntax. So this was a simple example about how to bypass a control flow in an application by using misconfigured exported activities. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.